Hello there guys and welcome back to the FIFA 21 career mode with Juventus and today we've got the second episode of the career mode. So just before we go any further then into today's episode, the majority of you guys watching this right now aren't subscribed to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's episode, please go down below, hit the red subscribe button, it's totally free and you can always go back and change your mind. So in the last episode then we started off this career mode and we got a massive win against Napoli, only a 1-0 win. We've got our hands on some silverware already. We also played our first game then of the Serie A season, which was against Atalanta. We was at home for that game and we got a 2-0 win, which as you guys can see at the moment, this is how the table's looking after only one game has been played. But we did also then pick up a couple of injuries in the last episode. Some really unfortunate ones happened to two centre-backs here, two long-term injuries to both Bonucci and Chiellini. They're both going to be out for up to, well, six weeks for Bonucci and five weeks for Chiellini. So at the moment, we have to, you know, swap and change around in our defence. But we are looking at making some signings then in today's episode. Definitely one big signing, but maybe another signing depending if we manage to sell any more players because at the moment, we haven't actually sold any players. We haven't signed any players. So I'm hoping today's episode will change that. We've only got a couple of days left in the transfer window. So we're going to get start getting down to business. So we did get an offer then at last episode for Sami Khedira from Barcelona and like I said I didn't really feel like he was going to move there and that's why I tried to ask for 15 million from Barcelona but they rejected that they weren't willing to pay that much for him but in today's episode I've also added Rabiot to the transfer list he's currently valued at 22 million pounds so we can get anything near that for him that would be great and allow us to get a few more players through the door. So let's go ahead then and take a look at the new and updated shortlist and as you can see Paul Pogba has made an appearance onto the shortlist. Now I did obviously read all your guys' comments from the first episode and we got a comment here from Hamperbottom saying re-sign Paul Pogba as he is linked with a move back to Juve and now I think that's an amazing idea and a lot of you guys did agree with that as well and like I say if, for you guys that don't know which I think is a very small part of you guys but he did obviously play for Juventus uh, just before he joined Man United so I think a move back there for him would do wonders for him although he is performing quite well for United in real life but I think it would be an amazing move in this career mode so I do want to make that happen in today's episode and we do have Modric still in the shortlist but I think making a move for Pogba would be a lot better so I'm going to go ahead and remove Modric from the shortlist and now that does just leave Pogba and Memphis Depay now Memphis Depay I did want to try and sign him but with Dybala up front, and we've also got Morata who can play up front. I don't feel like the need to sign Depay for the striker position. And also at Cam, we can also play Pogba at Cam, which I think he would play really well there. And we can get him on a development plan to play there if needed. So I don't think the Memphis Depay would be a much needed transfer. So I think Paul Pogba definitely, I do want to try and get him in in today's episode. But I still want you guys to let me know down below in the comment section who else would be a great fit. For this side. But I also did see a couple of people in the last episode as well that mention a few different formations. And like I say, I'm all ears for any sort of changes to the tactics or even formations. Falls under the same thing. But you can see here, I did make a new team sheet, which is the 4-4-2 flat. Which I think would work really well with this side. And obviously, Juventus have been using it in real life. So I do want to try it at some point in this career mode. It's not a finished article at the moment. I've literally just gone ahead and made it just to show you guys what we would be working with. And Dybala can actually still get a plus two while playing it in that left mid position, which I really do like the idea of that. But like I said, we can always go ahead, change things round. Dybala unfortunately gets a minus three there. He gets only a minus two at striker. But I think there at left mid or even right mid, Dybala would work best. And like I said, we would Look at probably using this formation at some point in this career mode. So I know in the first episode then I was talking about needing a backup striker and how if we did have Morata and also Ronaldo leading the line, I'd like a new backup striker for on the bench. Now I didn't really give this guy any sort of like look in, if I'm going to be honest. Now I know you guys will leave in some comments down below and I do remember rightly this guy Chiesa. Ch I'm guessing I'm pronouncing it right. I have heard of him, don't get me wrong. It's not like the first time I've ever heard of him. But I haven't heard too much about him, so to speak. And he's 78 rated, only 22 years of age. And he can play centre forward and at right wing. He's got four star skill moves, four star weak foot. And also, very interestingly, high, high work rate. And he has got some amazing stats there, I've got to say. What's that? 81 ball control, 84 dribbling. He's finishing at the moment, I do believe. He's only 70, but obviously we can improve that. And they have got him on development plan at the moment. He's also got 84 sprint speed. Now, if I do remember rightly from the comment section... Someone did say he scored all three goals in um, all three goals over the two legs that uh, Juventus played against Sevilla. Now, don't hold me to that. I do believe I did, did read that in the comment section. So, like I said, I think I, I ignored this guy a little bit too much in the first episode, and I can't wait to try and get him some game time. 
and just see how good he really is. So let's get to the main talking point then of today's episode, re-signing Paul Pogba back to Juventus. And like I said, I can't wait to make this move. And I think definitely one thing I do want to do is get him on a development plan to learn a centre attacking mid role. Because I feel like he is a lot better going forward and in the centre mid role than he is at CDM. As you can see, they're defending. He's only 65, so I feel like he's definitely better going forward than he is. Like I said, like I, said I don't mind him sitting deep and playing as a deep line playmaker. But in terms of, like I say, actually defending, you can see their standing tackle, slide tackle, defensive awareness. I feel like he's definitely better going forward for the side. They also got there some amazing traits. All six traits filled out as well. So let's go into this. Valued at £53 million. The assistant manager recommends 55.2 to 59.5. Let's go into this now and try and re-sign Paul Pogba. So I'm thinking then for this transfer offer to try and offer Sami Khedira in the deal as well. You can see Paul Pogba... Currently valued at £53 million and I've offered 44 Now with the 9.5 that Sami Khedira is supposedly valued at, that would take it up to £53.5 So I'm going to go ahead and submit this offer. If not, we've also got Rabio, who I can obviously try and offer in the deal because you can see with this, if this went through, we'd have at £61 million in the transfer budget. So let's have a see if Oli is going to accept that. And he does, okay, like the sound of Sami Khedira joining the side, but he wants £48.5 million. He also wants this 15% sell-on clause as well. A little bit interested in the sell-on clause there, but I can imagine he's, he's seeing, you know, Paul Pogba might make the move to Real Madrid someday. So I'm going to lower that down to 8 and 48.5. I think we can live with that, if I'm going to be honest. It's only uh, 4.5 more than what I originally offered. So let's go ahead and submit that offer. Lowered the sell-on clause down to 8%. Is Oli going to accept that? And, okay, finally, we can do business. And our transfer fee does 40%. Pogba's next transfer fee seem reasonable. And it doesn't seem reasonable, but I do really want him in the side. I don't really want to risk, you know, making this deal fall through. We've not got many days left in the transfer window. So let's go ahead and accept that deal. And there we go. Let's go into contract talks now with Paul Pogba and see if we can come to an agreement. So we're into the contract talks here then. And interestingly enough, and this is one thing I do hate about FIFA... Is how, you know, Pogba is on 240000 at Man United, yet he's willing to come here and take a pay cut of 135000 Fair enough, he's got an appearance bonus on there, which I will remove and increase his wage to probably around about 170. I think he's fair enough. Keep his signing on bonus the same. But let's go ahead and submit that offer. Let's see what Pogba does say to that Andy's agent. And, okay, he's going to join the club on 170000 a week. Here we go then. Paul Pogba is at Juventus. A lot of you guys have been waiting to see this. And I'm so excited that you guys did recommend this down below. I can't believe I didn't think of it in the first episode. But here he is. And I put him straight in, in that centre attacking mid roll. And he's got no minus, no plus at the moment. I'm guessing that's because of sharpness. Like I say, just joining the side. But I thought he might have had a minus one or two. But he doesn't, which is great. And I'm still going to put him on that development plan anyway and see if it does increase anything if we can. But here is some of his stats as well. A high attacking work rate. And like I said, that's why I wanted him in that centre attacking mid role. And six foot three as well. And here is some of his stats. I can't wait to use him in game as well. I haven't used him in this FIFA. And I do think he would do very well in this side. So you can see here, here is our new and updated bench. So we've got Chiesa. Now let me know down below if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I've got a feeling I am. But it might not be. Chiesa, Maratta, Ramsey, Bernadeschi, um, Kuller. Oh, I can't pronounce that guy's name. Kuller. Kulosevsky. I think that might be right. Bentacourt and also Buffon on the bench. Now, we've got no defenders on the bench as of yet. That's because we got Chiellini and also Benucci out injured. Because uh, obviously, normally, I think either De Danilino or Demiral would be on the bench. But that is how the team is looking at the moment. going to try and move on Rabio if we can before the window does shut. And we're going to go ahead now and take a look at our transfer budget and see how much we do have left. So after that deal then, it does leave us with £55 million in the transfer budget. Now, if we do manage to sell Rabio for his value, which is currently valued at £22 million, that would take us up to £77 million in the transfer budget, which is still a lot of amount of money to bring in a good, really good player for this side. Now, in terms of what position to sign, I don't really know. Maybe I'm thinking right midfielder, because Quadrado is a great player, don't get me wrong. But if I'm thinking of a position that could improve, that could improve um, I think maybe that right mid position and get someone that's maybe 84 to 86 rated, um, that would be really great and really improve this side. So now we've got the fun stuff out of the way then. It's now time to finally get some results on the board. And now Pogba is going to start in this game. Of course, he is back in the Juventus home kit. And here we are. We're taking on Roma for the first game in today's episode. 
They're playing a very similar formation, 3-4-2-1. Now, they did draw in their first game, so they're currently in 12th place. Obviously, we're looking to get a win. Of course, we are. Now, I don't really know who to play just behind Paul Pogba, so I've gone with Arthur and McKenney. Now, we don't have a natural CDM at the club. Now, Selim Rabio could come at a mistake because we don't actually have any sort of, like, defensively-minded midfielders at the moment. So, like I say, McKenney's probably the best one we've got, surprisingly, 75-rated. He definitely has the best uh, defending and physical stats overall. So we're going to play him there with Arthur in the midfield and Pogba just ahead of them. So let's go into it and hopefully start off today's episode with a win. Here he is then back at Juventus. And like I say, guys, I just can't wait to use him and see how he does perform in this game. And I'm so glad that he doesn't get any sort of like minus overall by playing in that cam position because that's where I want to play him. I want him involved in all the goals. And obviously, there we go. You can see Chris Smalling at Roma but uh, but yeah here he is straight away running straight on trying to get the ball here but like I say he's going to be playing just behind the baller and Ronaldo and I want to try and see you know I want to try and get at least maybe 15 goals with him this season might be a little bit too ambitious but I think definitely playing in that cam position uh, cam position sorry it can be done there we go pushing forward now the licks getting forward waiting to play it to Ronaldo possibly and okay time that off there but the ball is looking free. Great ball there from Pogba. Roll that inside. Take the finish on. And okay, asking a lot there really to get that into the back of the net. Should have definitely got a lot closer. But uh, not a bad start to the game so far. Pogba here now. Okay, maybe through for Ronaldo. Ronaldo's going to sprint up to that one. It's in. Surely it is. 16 minutes in. Pogba gets an assist. Ronaldo finds the back of the net. And them two, I'm hoping, will link up really well in this career mode. I couldn't have asked for a better start. 16 minutes in. And like I say, with that through ball, you could say it was a little bit risky, but Ronaldo had the sprint speed to get forward and get on the end of it there. You can see he plays it through. Ronaldo having to make up ground, and he does. And he gets on the end of that one. And that was surely always going into the back of the net. And that's Ronaldo's second goal of the Serie A season. Baller now looking at options. Ronaldo's free. Okay, Roma got to do a lot better here defensively. Ronaldo with the shots. And wow, okay, I put way too much power behind that one. I was hoping to get top right corner there. And, yeah, just way too much power. Oh, no way. Zeko might be in. And, no way. Let's get it cleared once again. And we can't concede here, surely. Not long now before half time. Pedro. And there we go. Thank God. Let's get this out now. Arthur. Okay, never mind. I wanted that ball cleared. And I wanted it played forward. And we still can't get it cleared here. Mkhitaryan now. And Arthur, this is what I'm saying. We've not really got any sort of defensive... Midfielder in the side that can make standing tackles and really have defensive awareness. And that could cost us, you know, when we start playing the big sides in the Champions League. And we'll have to just try and hope that we outscore the other teams. Pellegrini now, and wow. Okay, 1 1. Lorenzo Pellegrini scores for Roma. And 43 minutes in, just before half time, Roma level it in this game. And here is have a look. Here is a look at the replay here. Just a great ball through, really. We got caught out there. Pellegrini. In the end, he was in plenty of space and he gets the shot away straight past our goalkeeper, Chesney. And there we go. 1-1 just before half-time. Quadrado trying to get on the attack here straight away. Through for Ronaldo. Please in the back of the net and it is. There we go. 2-1 straight after kickoff here in the second half. Ronaldo makes it 2-1 in this game. And I think that was, it was... Was that Pogba again with the assist? I might be wrong there, guys, but... I've got a feeling it was, and we're straight back where we was just before. And Pogba there with another assist. Yeah, Pogba with the assist. Ball through. And having Ronaldo in his team is literally like having a cheat code. Uh, cheat code sorry. And that's now three goals for him this season. Okay, we could be caught out here by Roma. A ball over the top. But luckily, we're trying to track this here with Danilo. No way, not a corner. Oh, for God's sake, we've given away the corner. 72 minutes in. We are going to make some changes as well. I put the ball out to the left-hand side. Um, just to try and get a change on up front for us. Chiesa is going to come on and also uh, Quadrado is going to go off and Bernadeschi is going to come on on the right-hand side. And like I say, hopefully we can just see out this win right now. Not long left, 18 minutes in. Come on, clear that one. Oh, thank God it goes wide. I really thought that was going in. Okay, Pogba plays out wide now. But Bernadeschi, maybe a low cross is due into the box. Trying to find Pogba. And, okay, Chris Smalling, let's just keep putting the pressure on here. We might be able to try and... What? How has that gone into the back of the net? 77 minutes in. I don't know. I don't think it'll go down as a Paul Pogba's goal, if I'm going to be honest. I think it'll definitely go down as an own goal. But how has that happened? Roma really not having their best of games in this one. 
And that's now 3-1 in this game. Let's go ahead and take a look at the replay. And you'll see here the low cross inside. And with Pogba don't even get a touch on it. He's just the closest person to the ball. And the goalkeeper makes a massive mistake there. Trying to get the ball under control. And it just goes into the back of the net. Wow, it's not the first time I've seen it in FIFA. And I'm sure it won't be the last. But there we go. 3-1 in this game now. Yeah, I didn't think it would go down as anyone's goal. Definitely an own goal. But there we go. 3-1 in this game. So there's going to be two minutes added on now then. Pogba, maybe one last chance. Chiesa, I think it's how it's pronounced now. I'm pretty certain. I might be still wrong. Uh, but let's just get a full-time whistle gone in this game. Our goalkeeper's not making another mistake again. Uh, but there we go. We get a 3-1 win to start things off in today's episode. A good win against Roma. But that own goal definitely helped us at the end there. And we're still unbeaten. Only two games in. But still unbeaten in the Serie A. So here is then the results and fixtures from the first game in today's episode. It's a little bit confusing at the moment, guys. But if you just look on the left-hand side... Look at the 29th of August and then read downwards, you guys will to see. And you can see Inter Milan actually losing in their game 3 2 to AC Milan. What a game that was to watch, you can imagine. Also, Napoli lost in their first game. No, actually, we played Atalanta, I might be wrong, sorry, but Napoli drawing 2 2 in their game. So, not a good game for them either. So, here is then the league table after the first game in today's episode. We, now, we have now, sorry, moved up into second place. Level on points with AC Milan and Lazio. So, not a bad start from us so far. Just hoping we can keep it up. But with the likes of Inter Milan dropping points, you can see they lost to AC Milan. Napoli down in 10th place as well. Um, Roma down in 18th place. Definitely not their ideal start to the season. So, we have had then a transfer offer for Rabio, And it actually comes from Manchester United. Who, like I say, we would obviously did the deal already with them. To sign Paul Pogba, but they want to sign at Rabio now for £24.3 million. And I've got to say, I'm kind of interested in this in this offer because it's the only offer we've had for him so far. Um, and I could get 38.5 for him, which if I could get that amount of money for him would be great. But he's the only sort of defensive midfielder we have at the club and we're on transfer deadline day right now. And I don't think it's a smart idea to sell him, seeing as though I don't really know who to replace him with at the moment. But, like I say, it might be the only time we get to sell him. So, I'm a little bit 50-50 at the moment. We are going to get the most money for him right now. So, I do think, while we're not playing any sort of knockout football, you know, we're only in the group stage of the Champions League, that sort of stuff, I can sort of risk and sell him. Whereas, say if this was January and we had no sort of backup transfer that we could make, I would not be interested in making this. So let's go ahead and delegate this. We could get a lot of money for him. But, like I said, if we could even get 22 million for him, we'd be happy. But I'm going to try and get, um, so let's, see, let's see if we can get a 30 million for him. Try and push the boat out here. It is Manchester United. And try and not take any less than 24 million. Like I said, I can get more than his value. I'll be happy with that. So let's start the offer, of, uh, start, start the offer off, uh, bloody hell. Start the offer off at 30 million and not sell him for any less than 24. So Man United then have returned and they're willing to pay 26.8 million for Rabio, which I don't think is a bad amount at all, if I'm going to be honest. Um, like I said, my only concern with this transfer is if we don't have any defensive midfielders in the side. That's my only concern. But I'm hoping we should be able to last out now till the January transfer window and just see how the team does before and without one, you know. Uh, we've got three wins already this season. So let's go ahead and accept that offer. Um, obviously, I'm not really interested in, you know, not too happy about strengthening Man United side. But let's just see how we do get on without him. And then if, if it's bad, obviously we can go in in January and go and sign, you know, a good CDM. So we're on the last hour then of the transfer window. I thought I'd quickly show you guys some of the top deals that have happened. And as you can see, Pogba being the top deal of the summer here. 48.5 million plus Sammy Kudira brought him back to Juventus. Now, obviously we are using Realism mod. Um, now with that, you can see the transfers are totally different. No 90, 100 million pound signings. Uh, Zagadou going to Spurs, Luke Shaw going to Atletico Madrid, which is quite interesting. Marlon there going to Leverkusen, Milic going to Atletico Madrid. So Atletico Madrid really strengthening their side this season. Diop going to Dortmund, Jonathan Tarr going to Real Madrid. That is quite interesting as well. Any sort of other standout ones? Fernandez there going to Arsenal, you could say. Um, okay, I think that's pretty much it. Mike Longstaff going to Barcelona now. I didn't expect that on the realism one, I've got to say. But he is 20 years old and a centre mid, so moving for 9.6 million to Barcelona. But then to be fair, out of the blue, Barcelona did sign Martin Braithwaite, and who you did not expect to go to Barcelona. So you could 
put Matty Longstaff in that same category as as uh, Martin Braithwaite. So as you guys seen then, we did accept the offer for Manchester United. But you can see here the transfer talks did break down. And Man United have confirmed they'll now intend to pull out of all further negotiations. Which uh, part of me feels relieved. Because if anything, I'd rather sell him at the beginning of a transfer window. Rather than at the end when I don't have any replacement for him. But at the same time right now, I did want to try and get rid of him and get some money ready for the January transfer window. So I have to just wait and see now if another offer will come in for him in the January transfer window. So let's get into the final game then of today's episode, taking on Lazio. And if you guys remember, they are top of the table right now. So we're going against a very informed Lazio and they've got some amazing players in their side. And again, playing a 3-1-4-2, a very similar formation to us. But uh, we got off to a really good start in today's episode. A good 3-1 win against Roma. Pogba and Ronaldo linking up really well. So I'm hoping for more of the same in this game. So let's get into it and hopefully walk away with a win and see ourselves at the top of the table. McKenny gets the ball up here to Ronaldo. Plays it through there. Alexandro just... Okay, he's got a hold of the ball. Never mind. Inside. Dybala. Ronaldo. Never mind. Pogba with the shots. Dybala with the shots. He ends up going over the bar there. Nine minutes in. I didn't... No, yeah. It didn't take a deflection there. But I'm surprised that Sandro even got back onto that ball, to be fair. Just trying to make the most of the opportunity. Oh, there we go. Won it back. Here we go, Pogba. Send Ronaldo running. Looking for a pass here. Maybe two. Dybala. And we can. Can he finish it? And we just can't get it through in the end. Great defending there from Mandy. We can win this header, though. There we go. Let's get straight back on the counter-attack here now. Arthur uh, plays it up towards Pogba. Okay, just try and take a shot on himself. Go on. And, okay, that's a great save. Won ourselves a corner. And I'll definitely take that in towards Ronaldo. Hopefully Pogba takes it. The cross is inside the header though. Just nothing comes from it. Danilo, maybe the pass into the box. And yeah, just straight towards the goalkeeper in the end. Sandro cuts it out here. Just trying to get something going. Finding it quite difficult against Lazio here as they expected us to. We're going to start playing some more risky passes. Try and break them down. And Pogba now looking for options here. The ball is free. Go to Ronaldo now, and Ronaldo, go on, you're in space, take the shot on, and it's on. And the goalkeeper making another great save once again. Another corner here, in towards Ronaldo this time, but way too far out. Danilo might have tried to take the shot on this time, but nothing comes of it. Okay, that's a decent ball here. Lazio straight after kickoff in the second half. Lulisic now, and okay, get that loose ball. Go on, Quadrado, and McKenny. sorry, my mistake, and he loses it straight away. And I hope Lazio don't score here right now. You know, second half, nil-nil. I'll take that, I guess, against league leaders. And um, Pogba now, go on. Oh, just couldn't get it through for Ronaldo. Can he get it? Can, no. Okay, that is great bit of movement there. Bit of skill. Sandro inside. Just try and build it up just a little bit slow. Let's get some players forward to help us in this attack. Dybala. Okay, almost lose it there, but we've still got it. McKenney. Um, okay, again, lacking any sort of real option here. Dybala in for Pogba. Okay, go on, just keep a hold of that one. And he ends up losing it in the end. Finding it really hard at the moment to break Lazio down and just try and get a shot away, really. Pogba now forward, looking for Ronaldo. Go on, Ronaldo, just take that one. Finish it, maybe. And okay, wasn't really going to get out in goal, was he? Here we go, McKenney in towards Ronaldo. Pogba's free. Take the shots on Pogba. Oh, as if, man, that's probably our best chance of the game, I've got to say. It wasn't even that great of a chance, if I'm honest. Like, of an opportunity, but that's definitely our best one so far. Here we go, McKenny now pushing us forward. Get this ball up to the baller. Do with Pogba and Ronaldo making a run. Here we go, Ronaldo. Um, okay, it's quite tight here in the middle. I think that's where we're getting a few problems. Let's get Quadrado on this. A low cross, just try and find Ronaldo. Couldn't find him in the end. But I think trying to go down the centre there just isn't really working. It's too tight. I think going down the wings might be the option in this one. Not long left. We've got to try and find a winner. Okay, might be in trouble here. Might be in trouble. Quite outnumbered by Lazio. That's a great ball through. Oh, thank God. We have saved that one. Quadrado, let's just get it cleared because I do not want to risk us. Okay, never mind. It's supposed to be cleared. But obviously, I could have done a much better job there at getting that cleared. But again, 82 minutes. I'll take a draw if I'm going to be honest. I would probably take a draw. But I am looking at trying to get a winner here. Ronaldo, the ball is not really in space. Ronaldo, just run with it. Just run with it, Ronaldo. Go on, ball roll that one over. That's it. Go on, take it. The shot is away and he's in. 84 minutes. Ronaldo gets the winner, hopefully, in this game. And, oh my God, we went down the centre in the end. And I tried looking at playing a pass to Dybala. But he just ended up backing away from Ronaldo. So we had to take the opportunity while we could. And he does the ball roll and just gets himself with enough space to get the shot away. 
and what a goal it was. You can see here, just backing away from him, then he decides to come to him, ball rolls it, takes a few touches, and then fires it home. The goalkeeper doesn't even move, and that's now his fourth goal, I do believe. Yeah, his fourth goal of the Serie A season. Quadrado getting forward. Could we get a second here? Trying to time that run there for Dybala, and he's in. Dybala, that's it. Okay. Oh, he's going to be offside in the end. 90 minutes now, Ramsey. Wow, Quadrado doesn't have great stamina, does he? He's already... That's it, what, 90 minutes is pretty much in. He's fully knackered there. But let's get Ramsey on. Might as well. Let's just see out this game now and get this win. Win that header there, Sandro. That is great. Pogba, get that ball. And okay, McKenny, just get it forward. Referee, blow the whistle. Okay, yeah, there we go. Referees, blow the whistle for full time in this game. Only a 1 0 win, but I'll take that. And that's a good three points to hopefully put us top of the table. So we have had then some good news after the final game in today's episode. Chiellini has returned from his injury, can rejoin first team training session. So like I say, I will try and get him involved possibly in the next episode. So that win then against Lazio does put us top of the table there on nine points. AC Milan drawing their last game. And who did he draw against? And he drew against Napoli 3-3 in that game. Wow, okay, but there we go. We're top of the table, three games in on nine points. Let's take a look down the table. Napoli, like I say, not having a good start there. Three draws so far for the start of their season. And the bottom three isn't looking too great either. But uh, I'm just glad we are top of the table. So there we go then, guys. That's going to be it for today's episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Here's another look, though, at the injury list. And you can see Chiellini... He's back in training and it's going to be about 13 days before he's fully fit and literally no risk of another injury. Benucci is going to be looking at another three weeks still, which isn't great. But uh, but yeah, at least he'll be back around about episode four, possibly episode five at the most. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. A massive signing in Paul Pogba, a real good signing. And already off to a good start here back at Juventus. So if you guys enjoyed it, don't forget, leave a like down below on the video. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. And don't forget to join us in the next episode where we will be starting in our Champions League journey. And I'm hoping we can do a lot better than Juventus have been doing in real life. So if you guys have enjoyed it, leave a like down below. Hit the, hit, uh, sorry, <laughs> hit the subscribe button if you are new. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode.